Whoa! That must have hit a rock in the berm there. Wow. That is sweet. That is so sweet. Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. That was really cool. That was a Mask HD. It's the first rimfire can being put out by Dead Air Armament. And I say first because the manual revealed to me that they have a short can for rimfire in the works. I don't know when that's coming out, but the Mask HD was the, was the can that I had most anticipated getting my hands on this year out of all the new ones that were released. And I was very lucky that they allocated me one from very early in the production cycle. I put a brick through it on these three different hosts and I found that it is something that was worth all that anticipation. And that's why the Mask HD from Dead Airs was coming up next on Twang and Bang. The Mask HD is the first rimfire silencer from Dead Air Armament. This 5.1 inch thread on can is full auto rated for a variety of 17 and 22 caliber rimfires as well as 5.7 by 28 FN. The Mask HD has a 1.1 inch diameter ending in a tri-lobe removable end cap that's tuned to give the silencer a deeper tone. Immediately noticeable is the Mask HD's family resemblance to the Dead Air Sandman cans like this L pictured here. It has similar flats on the tube and matching knurling on the lock ring. The Mask HD comes with a very nicely finished disassembly tool for removing the front end cap. The rear lock ring removes easily by hand, at which point the baffle stack simply pushes out from front to rear. The baffles are 17.4 pH stainless steel, aligned by an easy to use tab and slot system. The baffles lock together to reduce the amount of lead that makes it between the baffles and the tube. They are built with standoff ridges that ease disassembly even after high round counts between cleanings. The rear and front caps are both designed to do more than hold the HD together. They help to manage the gas flow through the can while dropping the tone deeper than many other cans, especially considering its short length. The baffles are asymmetrical K baffles with a void that disrupts gas flow. This helps the chambers to capture and cool the gases, allowing the Mask HD to achieve a claimed 39.5 decibel reduction on a pistol and near dry fire like sound on a bolt action rifle. These are coming off. Oh. <laughs> that is super nice. Oh my gosh. Wow, I just, I love silencers. I just love silencers and this is super nice. <laughs> All right, so I got my ears on because there's just too much shooting of unsuppressed weapons going on around me. And uh, I'm not willing to risk my ears just to look good on video shooting a, a suppressed 22 silencer. But, but I've, I've listened to this enough to know that the, you're not going to complain about the suppression with this and so from here it's just having fun with it hopefully I can get some good shots in between the volleys that they're doing out there. <laughs> These mags are too are too small <laughs> I want longer mags <laughs> just in time. <laughs> I got that mag dump in just in time. <laughs> I think you get the idea. <laughs> this is as quiet as any silencer that I've had on the end of this hose. I don't have meter, but the tone is really, really nice. That's one of the things that I keep hearing time and time again about 
people shooting dead air silencers. And we're talking about dealers who have access to multiple rimfire cans or shooting all the time, every day, same day. The tone is one of the things that I knew that they focused on, and it's got a nice deep tone to it that none of my other silencers have uh, in rimfire. Well, I was a genius and then I wasn't. I thought of using the Simpson insulated wrap, the, the case that comes with it to take it off, and it actually works really well, only I use the label side, and I think it might be glue or it might be the edges of the trim melted onto the outside of the can. So if you're gonna be like me, make sure you use the non-label side and it works fantastic for getting a can off. Okay, now we're gonna do my 1022 takedown. That's super nice. Wow, <laughs> the ringing of the steel hurts my ears. I love it. That's fantastic. <laughs> Sweet. I think we got a good lull in the shooting right now. The other guys went to lunch. I've got access to their bay, which means I've got a berm a lot farther away. We're not gonna get as much of the impact noise coming back to the microphone. This is my Savage FVSR. It is my favorite suppressor platform. It's a fantastic precision rimfire at a really, really low price. I think it's the number one value in firearms. I have seen meter results where the sound of shooting suppress was only a one and a half decibels louder than dry fire. I don't know whether to buy it or not, but we're gonna see what we get. Oh! <laughs> I believe it. I don't know if you can see, but I'm hitting little pieces of clay pigeon. It certainly isn't affecting the accuracy at all. All right, so now we're gonna show you what a dry fire sounds like. Do that again. Oh my gosh. That is really quiet on a bolt gun. That is insane. Wow. I'm not shooting paper, I'm not shooting groups. I plan to do that and I'll put a video up on my Facebook page. <laughs> I'm not having any trouble hitting pieces of clay pigeon about the size of a dime. That is really nice. Wow. They did a really good job and I just love the tone. It's nice and deep and I've got, I've got tinnitus that's never gonna go away. And so anything high, high in frequency tends to bug my ears. Uh, even when it's not technically uh, above the hearing safe levels. But I, I could shoot this all day and uh, it, it's nothing compared to just listening to that unsuppressed nine millimeter. And there's a big burn between me and that guy that's shooting right now. They did a, a great job, definitely recommended. Here's a direct comparison of a shot suppressed by the Mask HD and the sound of a dry fire. I removed the sound of the bullet hitting the berm to make the comparison more accurate.
I don't need a meter to tell me that is really quiet. To see what effect the Mask HD has on point of impact, I first shot four five shot groups at 25 yards with my Savage FBSR unsuppressed. The range was pretty crowded, which is why you hear so many other gunshots. And I got a few flyers because the shooting bench is one long wooden bench shared by everyone. So when somebody bumps it, the whole thing will shake a little bit. But I think these are good enough for my purposes. After threading the Mask HD onto the FESR, I repeat the pattern, starting in the lower left and working my way counterclockwise. Any flyer you see is due to somebody bumping the bench and not the Mask HD, and as the shooter, I've found that this can does not affect group size from what I'm used to getting unsuppressed. Its point of impact change is also the smallest I've ever experienced with any silencer in any caliber, giving me maybe an eighth of an inch drop from unsuppressed, but still centered left to right. Combined with the extremely quiet sound, this demonstrates that the Mask HD is a bolt gun rock star. Okay, I'm a goober, and you might be a goober too. So that's why I'm going to tell you what not to do with a can like this. This has nothing to do with just this mask or, or its design unique to itself, but you can do it with any kind of can that has a tube that's threaded onto an end cap like this. When it was hot, I switched hosts and I cranked it down holding on to the flat spots on the tube. And when this bottomed out on the, on the, the end of the muzzle, the shoulder of the muzzle, the tube got about an eighth of a turn tighter. And when it cooled down, I couldn't get it apart. But it was super easy. I just threw it in a freezer, let it there for about a half an hour, and I was able to take it apart, uh, take the cap off by hand. I have not taken it apart yet. All I've done is I've let it dry from all the condensation. And this is the first time that we're gonna take it apart right here and see, see how it did. And it's got about uh, 400, 500 rounds through it. So, actually, I've got to do the front cap first according to the directions. And uh, no problems. This is room temperature, by the way. No problems getting that off. And getting the end cap, the, the rear end cap off looks pretty good. And let's just see. Yeah, so they're coming right out. So I said. Okay, so I'm gonna need a, a pusher of some kind, a, a, a dowel to, to get the, the rest of them out. But you can actually see that there's very little, very little that got outside of those baffles and it's probably just enough to create, I bet there's rings on the inside. Yeah, I can already see. So the inside of the tube has rings of leading right at where these are sealed together, baffle to baffle, and that's what I'm getting stuck on. But uh, I think a dowel rod, I should just be able to push that right out. Actually, before I get a dowel rod, I just started pushing it the other direction. So, oh, and they come right out, look at that. And that's, I just had to push the other direction. Because they, they say to, to send it out, there, but it's a tube, it doesn't matter. And uh, I'll get a close-up, but that's exactly what happened. I can see there are rings where the leaded gas got in between these, and, and that's it. There, there's, there was no cheating whatsoever. And you can see it's just dusty on the outside, a little bit of that lead dusting. But that's pretty clean, and that was, that was really easy to, to get out once I reversed directions. And um, they stick together a little bit. The baffles are they're stuck together a little bit, but and there you go. And I'm wearing gloves because I don't want to be handling stuff that has lead all over it and get it absorbed into my skin. No! <laughs> the movie magic is ruined. So yes, <laughs> I don't have it with me because obviously it's still in NFA jail waiting for my Form 4 to get here, but my range is my SOT, so I get a chance to shoot things, get visitation right, so I can review them for you while I wait. And so I have my AAC pilot on my FVSR with a picture I printed off the internet to scale stuck to the side. It's so humid it's not sticking so well. 
Well, a few things about what you saw. First of all, point of impact shift, it's really dependent upon the barrel. So the point of impact shift that you see with your Mask HD might be more than what you saw in this video. But I can tell you for this rifle, I've put a bunch of different cans on there. I own three different cans myself that I use on this rifle. And out of everything that I've ever put on this rifle, the Mask HD has the smallest point of impact shift. And I haven't had a problem with any of them with accuracy, but obviously the Mask HD does not blow up my, my groups or anything like that either. So I was really impressed with it from, from that standpoint. It sounded good on my 1022. It sounded really good on my 2245, but it blew me away on a bolt gun. It is a bolt gun rock star, and I cannot wait until I can get it home, shoot it right here in my backyard with my daughter. If you want to learn more about the Mask HD, be sure to click the link in the video description below. Be sure to check me out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash twangandbang.net. That's spelled out D-O-T-N-E-T -E to see what I'm doing in between these videos here on Full 30 and YouTube. And be sure to click right here to subscribe so you can catch my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool stuff. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time.